Welcome to our discussion about a classic film set in the 17th century. This captivating story follows a determined woman who faces various challenges, finds love, and experiences betrayal along the way. Throughout the movie, there are scenes that are funny, shocking, and even sad. As you watch, you might find yourself reflecting on moments that stick with you. Have you ever been deeply impacted by a movie? Whether it inspired you or left a lasting impression, we'd love to hear your story. Think back to your own experiences. Is there a particular memory associated with this film that you hold dear? Whether it's a humorous anecdote or a touching moment, share it with us. So grab your popcorn and let's delve into the world of this captivating story. Stay tuned for more insights and reviews. In a sprawling tale reminiscent of a bygone era, the epic period drama bears similarities to another renowned classic, but ultimately falls short due to several factors. One standout element is the portrayal of King Charles II, which shines brilliantly, embodying the immoral cynicism prevalent during that time. Adapted from a controversial novel, the movie encountered opposition from certain quarters, leading to compromises that diluted its potency. These alterations, especially the ending, detract from the original narrative's depth. Despite the stellar performance of certain cast members, others fail to fully captivate the audience. Technical aspects like lighting and costume authenticity leave much to be desired, although the depiction of historical events is commendable. However, the director's apparent preoccupation with censorship undermines the movie's overall coherence. Despite its merits, including a compelling score and well-crafted set pieces, the pacing feels sluggish at times, burdened by unnecessary scenes. A remastered release could potentially address some of these issues, elevating the movie to the status it deserves. Despite its flaws, it remains a significant piece of cinema history, illustrating the challenges of adaptation and the impact of external pressures on artistic vision. Originally, Erich Wolfgang Korngold was tasked with composing the score for the film, but had to withdraw due to illness. He was replaced by David Raxon. This controversial movie faced numerous production setbacks, including changes in leading lady and director. Its final cost exceeded $65 million, double the original budget, and an enormous sum for the 1940s, making it one of the most expensive Hollywood films of its time. Linda Darnell, during filming, worked alongside her ex-husband, Peveril Marley, with whom she eventually reconciled. She later credited the shooting of the movie for saving her marriage. The final film of Susan Blanchard was the 1947 movie Forever Amber. Among the American Film Institute's 2005 list of 250 movies nominated for FI's 100 Years of Film Scores, it secured a place. Over 200 hopefuls were tested for the coveted screen role of Amber before Peggy Cummins was signed. The 23-year-old was spotted by the producer in a West End play. It marked the end of Blanchard's career, earned recognition from FI, and introduced Cummins to the big screen. It remains a notable entry in film history. Forever Amber, a novel by Kathleen Windsor, brought to life the character of Amber St. Clair, a woman whose resilience and ambition captivated readers. When it was adapted into a film, the search for the perfect actress to embody this complex role began. Dolores Hart, a fresh face in Hollywood, emerged as the chosen one to portray Amber's journey from rags to riches. However, the path to casting her was not without its twists and turns. Peggy Cummins, another talented actress, initially vied for the opportunity to portray Amber on the silver screen. Yet, fate had other plans. Production encountered a hiccup as script revisions were deemed necessary. During this hiatus, doubts surfaced regarding Cummins' recognition in the industry, prompting the decision makers to seek a more established star. Thus, Linda Darnell stepped into the role, bringing her own flair to the character. As the production resumed, questions lingered about Cummins' involvement in the early stages. Accounts vary, leaving the exact duration of her filming shrouded in uncertainty. Vincent Price, a notable figure in the industry, ventured an estimation, suggesting a span of two months based on the extensive documentation through production stills. In the world of filmmaking, the journey from page to screen is often fraught with changes and adaptations. Forever Amber's transition was no exception, with casting choices and production challenges shaping its cinematic narrative. In Forever Amber, Doretta Johnson made her debut, showcasing her talent in front of the camera. The film also marked Mary Jane Shore's final appearance on the big screen. Renee Hubert's original costume designs for Peggy Cummins were repurposed for Linda Darnell, costing $65,000. An additional $25,000 was spent to revamp these costumes. 
These elements added depth to the film, contributing to its overall visual appeal. Vincent Price was initially cast in the film, but was replaced by Richard Green when filming pause for script revisions. The movie set an opening week record in the US, grossing over 700,000 from 17 theaters and 451 performances. In its second week, it grossed almost 800,000 from 27 theaters. After production halted on the Peggy Cummins version, Norma Varden's role was expanded. In 1947, something big happened in the world of movies. A movie directed by Otto Preminger became the top grossing film in the USA. This movie originally had another director named John Amstall, but Preminger stepped in. This change got people talking. One of the actors in the film was Dolores Hart. She's often linked with this movie, even though some say her first movie was Forever Amber. But both Dolores Hart and Richard Dinut say she wasn't in it. Adding to the mystery, Hart's father, Bert Hicks, appeared in the movie. This mix-up about who was really in the film adds more interest to its story. These kinds of stories from Hollywood's past keep people interested in movies from long ago. They show how storytelling through movies has always been special. In the rich history of Hollywood, the making of Forever Amber was full of creativity and tough moments. While trying to give the movie a British feel, the crew used a special mist, but it ended up causing stomach issues for many. The casting also had its share of surprises. Jean Tierney was first considered for the main role, but she turned it down after reading the script. Linda Darnell then took on the part and made it her own. Despite all the challenges, Forever Amber turned out to be a great movie, loved by audiences for its timeless love story in an old-time setting. The final film of actresses Alma Kruger and Natalie Draper featured in it. The Catholic Legion of Decency criticized it for glorifying immorality and demanded changes which the studio initially resisted. However, facing boycotts, the studio relented and altered the film to meet the Legion's standards. Changes included a narrated prologue, a new ending, and the deletion of scenes implying the protagonist's promiscuity. Despite these alterations, the film's booking suffered due to prior condemnation. Cornel Wilde hesitated to work with director Otto Preminger due to his dictatorial manner, but his involvement was insisted upon by studio head Daryl F. Zanuck. Alan Napier, a close friend of Michael Goh, who later portrayed Alfred Pennyworth in several Batman films, including Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. Napier and George Sanders appeared together in eight films, including Forever Amber, The House of the Seven Gables, Appointment in Berlin, Action in Arabia, Hangover Square, The Strange Woman, Lourdes, and Moonfleet. Daryl F. Zanuck and Fox acquired the screen rights to Kathleen Windsor's provocative novel for 200000 Facing opposition from the Catholic Legion of Decency, the film encountered censorship hurdles. To avoid condemnation, Fox had to make significant alterations, including tweaking the ending and appending a prologue and epilogue. Notably, it marked the beginning of a collaboration between director Otto Preminger and cameraman Leon Shamroy. Originally slated to play Lord Harry Omsbury, Vincent Price was replaced by Richard Green when Linda Darnell took on the lead role. Adjustments were necessary to navigate the stringent censorship of the time. During the production of the film, it faced several challenges, including script revisions and recasting. Richard Green and Linda Darnell replaced Vincent Price and Peggy Cummins after the initial suspension of filming. Despite these setbacks, the movie managed to become one of the most expensive productions of the 1940s, with a budget exceeding $65 million. The changes in casting and script adjustments didn't hinder its eventual release, and it went on to become a notable film of its time, showcasing the resilience of the production team in overcoming obstacles.